Welcome, dear viewers, to our show on the day of Ashura. I would like to take this opportunity to send my condolences to the Imam of our time on the death of his great grandfather. I would also like to send my condolences to all the viewers around the world who love Imam Hussein, be it from wherever background they come from. The day has arrived, the day where it's hard to talk, and the day where the earth shook with what took place upon it. We'll be discussing on this special show the different aspects of Ashura that we can learn, uh, learn from. With our esteemed guests, Sheikh Abbas Banju, Sayyid Mohsin Shah, and Muntazir Jafar. Truly, it's a very difficult day to speak on. And truly, if you kept us here for the rest of our lives, we would not do this event any justice. But to begin with, Sheikh, this idea of mourning and this day of Ashura, what was the purpose of this day? Why did Imam do what he did? When there is no better way of understanding the revolution of Imam al Hussein other than through the words of Ahlul Bayt themselves. And Imam al Sadiq points towards this reality in Ziyarat al Arba'een, where he points out why Imam Hussein did what he did. And in a part of this ziyarah, we say, the Imam teaches us to say, وَبَذَلَ مُحْجَتَهُ فِيك وَبَذَلَ مُحْجَتَهُ فِيك لِيَسْتَنْكِذَ عِبَادَكَ مِنَ الْجَحَالَ وَحِيرَةَ الظَّلَالَ This is that Imam al Hussein who gave up his soul in order to save Ya Allah, your servants, yani your creation from ignorance and from misguidance. This has a very deep connotation and it shakes the conscience of a person from the core if he contemplates upon these words. Yani, Imam al Hussein walked into the plains of Karbala with his infant Abdullah al saw his infant being slaughtered with a three-pronged arrow in his arms, took the blood of this infant and wiped it on his beard. For what? So that you and I will have a clear understanding of truth and falsehood, such that you and I can come out of the fold of ignorance and misguidance and walk on the path of this deen. This religion that you and I have today is as a result of Imam al Hussein's sacrifice in Karbala and watching his entire family being massacred. Why did he do that? So that you and I have an opportunity to seek this truth, seek the religion, and walk on the path of this religion. Sayyid Mohsin, we hear this story every single year, over and over again. How do you not get bored of this? Every single year, the same story. I think every year there's something new to learn, especially me every time. I hear the story of Karpala, there's a new element or a new event or a new angle. Which is a miracle, I think, yeah. Indeed, this is a massive miracle in itself. And the other thing is, every year we grow as human beings and then we can relate to different characters as we are growing. Whether we're young, we can look at, you know, Hazrat Qasim. When we're in our, what we call Jawaniyat, we can look at Hazrat Ali al Akbar. You know, when, when we're a bit older, we, we can look at Abu Fadil, we can look at Imam Hussein, we can even look at the ladies that were there in Karbala. And, and, and we can relate to their, you know, tragedy, we can relate to their situation. And furthermore, I think 
a miracle of, of Karbala, the, the fact that we don't get bored of it year after year, is the relationship we make with these characters and with Imam Hussein. And then it's like after Arbaeen and after Farhat Zahra, we, we go back to living our lives and it becomes a bit distant. We can become a bit disconnected until it comes again where we have the black cloth on our, on our skin, the black cloth at home, attending majlis after majlis after, and, and, and performing the azar. And I think that in itself is, is, a, is a miracle why we don't get bored of it mm. at all. Muntazir, in the holy month of Ramadan, we fast and our God consciousness gets uplifted. But then we, three months later, have another opportunity for our spirits to be raised again, although in a different way. How has it impacted you personally in the sense that you've got the month of fasting and then a few months later, another opportunity to become close to God? I think it's, um, <coughs> so, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's impacted me quite a bit in the last couple of years when you see that you go to the same center same centers rather go to a few maybe you go to a few same centers you see the same people coming to the same lecture to hear the same story year in year out but I challenge you to find me one person that feels any less sad this year than he felt the year before mm -hmm. or less sad this year than he felt 10 years ago even if he's right it's it's crazy because every time you find someone that they, always they'll always cry they'll always feel the sadness for Abi Abdullah and I think um, the the month in, in the calendar is very much needed for me personally I speak for myself first before anybody else but in terms of when these kinds of years uh, these kind of times come about in the Islamic calendar we automatically become more aware of our actions about our goings around what we do in life how we act towards other people towards ourselves towards our parents towards our family members um, and for me I think that that's a very well needed awareness mm -hmm for myself first. Mm. And Sayyid Mohsen, you touched upon this idea of different personalities um, and we become close to them. And I'm sure it changes every single year, but um, as of recent, which personality in Karbala do you have the hugest affection for? Or a fairer question would be, which story moves you most? I mean, it's, it's unfair. We can't give justice to the story of Karbala or to any specific individual because they're unique in their own. I remember one, po one poet says that they are all Hussein. Exactly. Well, so sure. they all have done yes, that the same goal. Yeah, but which, per yeah, which personality? For me, I, I always relate to, and the story that touches me the most is the story of Sayyidah Zainab, mm. because she witnessed everything from her own children to her brothers, her nephews. Um, don't forget, she had 18 brothers and every single one of them was slaughtered on the plains of Karbala. And she was very, very close with Imam Hussein. And even before Karbala, she witnessed exactly. other people in her family die. I mean, definite. And then she was so close to Abu Abdullah Hussein. And for her to, to see what happened to Abu Abdullah, the way he was butchered on the plains of Karbala. But you know, we, we sometimes we forget, we think that Karbala finishes on Ashura. Mm. We forget Oshama Gariba, we forget when they came and attacked the tents and set the tents on fire. We forget the looting of, of the, the jewelry and, 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 and the, the Rida, the, 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 you know, the... So, for me, say the Zainab, because I know what she's about to go through and I know about the journey to Sham. And also, you know, we have, you know, narrations say about Imam Sajjad. They asked him, why, why, why do you mourn and cry so much over your father for, you know, martyrdom is in your heritage. And he turned around and said, yes, it's the true martyrdom is in our heritage and it is an honour. However, the way we were paraded and embarrassed and ridiculed in Sham, uh, it, it broke his heart and, and he, would, he would, you know, it would forever torment him. And I think for me, Sayyidah Zainab, for what she witnessed in Karbala, and then for Sham al Gariba, and then the journey to, to Kufa, to Sham, and what happened there, for me, Sayyidah Zainab, is, her story breaks my heart every time. Mm, absolutely. Um, we're going to discuss in a few moments the different things that are recommended to do on this day um, of such grief. And one of the rituals and 
expressions is, is poetry, which we've done on most of our shows. So I'd like to ask Muntazir, in honour of this day, to recite just a few lines of poetry um, to remember this day of Ashura for our audience and for us in the studio. Ashura. And what can I tell you about the tent? The day where one by one they went from their tents. 24 hours that 1400 years later, still alive. The red skies continue to mourn the last of the five. Thirsty, yet, the enem yet then the enemies braver. Thirsty, yet then the enemies braver. And what else could be expected from the lions of Haydar? The truth on their side, removing fear from their hearts. Perhaps in a faraway land, but from their Lord, never far apart. Come look at that faraway land today. Come look at that faraway land today. Karbala, about you, what can I say? On one side, Abbas, and on the other, Hussein. On one side, Abbas, and on the other, Hussein, making heaven on earth. Bainul. Haramain, what can I tell you about the 10th day? Those tragic hours that had a massive display of love, of sacrifice, of giving, of loyalty. Those hours that turned companions into nothing less than royalty. Princes going to defend their king. Princes going to defend their king. For in a world without Hussein, what is the point in living? For in a world without Hussein, what is the point in living? What is the point of living in a world without Hussein? Sheikh, with putting the rituals aside, which, which we, we, have, we have discussed, what are the recommended acts to do on this day uh, of Ashura um, that the <coughs> Alubayt have taught us? There is a number um, when it comes to the acts that are to be done um, uh, on the day of Ashura. Obviously, we have the recitation of the Maktal in itself, which is recounting the entire tragedy of Imam al Hussein. And then, uh, in addition, with the uh, Latam and the Azadari, you have uh, the Azatwairij that takes place inside of Karbala mm. every year. This is a form of Aza which has been recorded by ulama of the past, the likes of Marhum Atullah Bahlul Ulum, Rahmatullah Ali, where he has seen Imam al hujjah Jalalahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, participate within the Azat Wairij. Uh, again, on the day of Ashura, from the acts that are recommended is the recitation of Ziyarat Ashura and the recitation of Ziyarat al Nahiyah. Mm -hmm. Ziyarat al Nahiyah is the eulogy of Imam al hujjah Sharif in regards to his grandfather Imam al Hussein. There are many realities of Ashura that are found within this Ziyara, Ziyaratul Nahiya. Um, in regards to Salawat, there is uh, two sets of Turak Asalas, uh, two prayers that are Turak as each, which is generally recited at some point during the day. The first raka person is supposed to recite Surah Al Hamd, then Surah Al Kafirun. The second raka he would recite Surah Al Hamd, then Surah Al Ikhlas. And then after that, you would recite a second set of prayers. In the first raka, Surah Al Hamd, then Surah Al Ahzab. And in the second raka, after Surah Al Hamd, Surah Al Munafikun. And you find that there is a big hikmah behind this, in that the first set of prayers. In the first rakah and second rakah, you recite Surah Al-Kafirun and Surah Al-Ikhlas, which is supposed to symbolize your faith and your subscription to Tawheed, mm -hmm. for which Imam al Hussein gave his life. And in the second, you have Surah Al-Ahzab and you have Surah Al-Munafikun, which shows you the different colors of the enemy, enmity that Imam al Hussein faced. When a person recites these two salahs, my advice is that take few days before or few days after to read through the meanings of these four surahs Surah Al Ahzab, Surah Al Munafikun. And through this, you are able to understand the type of enmity <coughs> Imam al Hussein faced. But more importantly, we find within these traits 
of the enemies of Imam al Hussein that we try and purify ourselves from. Mm. Say, Muslim, we know in um, some Muslims fast on this day. Obviously, we as Shias don't don't believe in that. Um, but I do notice in some cultures, especially the Indo-Pak culture, people do not eat or drink till Asr time, mm. or Dhuha time. Can you tell us a bit why that's done, and the um, meaning behind that? And in the subcontinent, we call it afaka. Afaka, yes, yeah, right. Um, and you refrain from eating and drinking only. And that is from Fajr until like the Dhuhr, Adhan, yeah. Asr, Adhan. And it's just to symbolize and remember um, the struggles of Abdul Allah said in his camp, where they had no water. So it's not actually a fast, is it? Or half a fast? It's it more of a, a sympathy, empathizing indeed, with their thirst. Indeed. I mean, I've, I've looked up in, in the Rasala Amalia, and uh, there are, you know, um, indications of, of, you know, refraining from drinking and eating from that time. So it, it is backed and supported. Mm. Uh, it's not wajib, it's mustahab. It's out of respect. It's out of respect. Yeah. And it's, you know, who are we to eat on this day if Abba Abdullah exactly, could not yeah. eat on this yeah. day? And who are we to drink water if, you know, little you know, Sukain mm. and Rukhaya couldn't mm. drink on, on this day? Even when a family member passes away, the last thing you eat of is food and drink yeah. um, when the funeral happens. So it's about that sympathy and empathy. Muntazir, um, apart from the recommended acts that have been passed down to us, what else do you like to do on this day? Um, I mean, what comes to mind is that obviously the night of Ashura, before um, the battle actually commenced, Imam did ask for one more night for he likes to converse with his Lord. Um, so the night preceding and the day of, and even the night after, what are the things that you personally like to do or maybe think about? So Ashura, as, as much as it's a um, historically very rich event, it's a very commemorative event, it's a very sad event, um, but also part of it, f within our community especially, I'm not sure about um, how it is with you guys, but a lot of us, they go to the cemetery. Mm. Um, in between, so once the Ashura day program finishes, before the Shami Gariban program starts, they head to the cemetery. It's a, it's a time for introspection. It's a time to reflect. Once you're there at the cemetery, you will also probably have some sort of Marshia recitation, some sort of eulogy. But also, it's, it's a quiet time. It's a time to reflect. Think about how Imam Hussein spent this day pleasing his Lord. And every action he did, his Lord was at the center of his mind. And think about how you can then implement that in your life. Yeah. That's, that's something I like. That introspection is something. Yeah, yeah. Good to very much emphasized in Islam in general. Shrek, to, to wrap up, um, and I'm sure as someone who speaks in the pulpit every single year, um, this is a very important question to you, but if you could pick maybe just one key lesson out of infinite amount of lessons from this day, maybe the one most relevant to us today, what would you tell us in the studio and the viewers at home of the most key lesson today to take from this momentous day? <coughs> we need to Honest, our love and our loyalty to Ahlul Bayt in everything that we do, from our actions, the lifestyle choices that we make, the manner in which we dress, the manner in which we understand Allah, obey Allah, everything revolves around Ahlul Bayt. And demonstrating this loyalty nurturing this loyalty in others, in our families, extended families, propagating the message of Ahlul Bayt, in particular the Wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen. This is one of the greatest lessons we can take. And when you look uh, into the day of Ashura, the manner in which the companions sacrifice themselves, this is because of their deep, deep, un conditional love for Ahlul Bayt, this wulaya that they had inside of them. And this is a lesson that we need to, to take from the many lessons of Karbala, that hopefully when our, when our Imam reappears and when the time comes where a sacrifice is needed, we do not hesitate either. We will be amongst those who are in the front lines. And this can only start with unconditional love, nurturing it, and more important, propagating and spreading it mm. as well. Yeah, I think looking at the whole story, I think 
the day of Ashura is the greatest love story we, we will ever ever see um, and the love is is between Imam Hussein and God in the end and then the love it provides to us as human beings who follow him and the love we have for him I think it will be unfair to end here but my other two guests what what's what's the most profound lesson that you take from Ashura after hearing it every single year I think it'd be nice to wrap up with what you what's the biggest lesson for you so please Oh, the many lessons. Um, the one I would like to convey to the audience is, is the lesson of um, Hazrat Hur. Absolutely. That the door of repentance. And I'm not I saying see. that, you know, Hur was a sin, <coughs> I'm not saying that, but to, to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and re return and turn back to the Ahlul Bayt. Even if it's at the final moment, you can and you should. And someone like Hur. You know, began our shura going to hell and ended up going to heaven, you know, making his, his decision to join Imam Hussein and never to lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in, in, you know, reforming who you are. Mm. That's one of Just following on from that, I think one of the things we can see is the, the varying ages that you had in the army of Abi Abdullah al Hussein from the likes of Habib ibn Mabahir. Uh, very close companion of Abu Abdullah to the likes of Abdullah al Radi' Ali al Laskar alayhi salam, six months old. You had ranging ages 13 year olds, 18 year olds, youth, young adults. I think it's never too early, never too late to give everything that you had in the way of Allah, in the way of Islam. Mm, beautiful. Dear viewers, thank you for joining us and Today is not the day where I will wish you all to have a good day. It's not that kind of day today. Today is the day where I ask you all, as those who try to seek God, or even on a humanitarian level, to take a moment out on this day to remember this great sacrifice. No matter where you come from, what your background is, this is one of the greatest stories to ever happen in the history of humankind. And we implore all viewers to look this up more, take time to read about it, take time to learn about it, and implement it in your lives. Many people search for God throughout their lives. Some find God in a pilgrimage, some find God in prayer. But I speak for many people, we found God in Karbala through the love story of Imam Hussain. To end, I would like to invite Brother Muntazir to recite a few verses of poetry and a eulogy as tradition says to us to do on this day. The, the eulogy is a very painful one, um, a very historic, a legendary one for those of you that know it. Um, it's, in, it's talking to the horse of Abi Abdullah mm. and saying, you know, where is Hussein? Where have you taken our protector?
وتني خالي حسين شاوين راح من دينا بالليل ميمون أريد علي أجواب وإخفي ونيني سارجع كل ما صاب قلبي صاب وثقل حنيني هذا الدم حسين لو حمر خضاب ما تدليني هم هم I'm a